Hello you all. This is the second and last video on our way from benzaldehyde and ethyl acetate to cinnamic acid. In the last video we ended with a mixture of cinnamic acid ethyl ester and ethyl acetate. This was then destiled to get rid of all the components boiling under 120 degrees Celsius. Sadly I lost this footage so I just have to tell you that that really happened. So then let us begin. For the hydrolysis step we need two chemicals. 9 grams of sodium hydroxide and 30 milliliters of ethanol. We also need 15 milliliters of water but that does not really count as a chem. So now we mix the ethanol into our reaction mixture as a solvent for the ester and the potassium hydroxide. This is then followed by the 9 grams of potassium hydroxide in solution. The mixture is then set up for a 3 hour reflux in which the hydroxy ion splits the ether bond. Then the cinnamic acid anion forms the potassium salt with the K plus ions left over from the potassium hydroxide. But this does not really matter because the salt is still in solution so the anion and the cation are separated anyway. The reation mixture is then diluted with some water and again set up for distillation. This time I even have the footage so you get to see it. The distillation is continued until all of the organic solvents are gone and there is only water and crude potassium cinnamate left in the flask. To get rid of side products the reaction mixture is washed several times with ethyl acetate, this works because we just generated the water soluble potassium salt of the cinnamic acid which in term is not very soluble in organic solvents. And now comes the nice thing about this, most of the side products are quite soluble in organic solvents so they can get washed away. For the washing the usual procedure is followed. The extracting solvent is added to the reaction mixture in the separatory funnel, this is then kept and shaken vigorously. After each shaking you should vent the separatory funnel depending on the volatility of the solvent to release the build pressure. The bottom water phase is then drained in a beaker and some hydrochloric acid is prepared. The acid is drip in slowly while stirring occasionally. This is done to free the cinnamic acid from its salt. What's happening is that the cinnamic acid anion takes a proton from the oxonium cation. Then the remaining potassium cation forms potassium chloride with the chloride anion left. And yet again this does not really matter due the fact that the salt is still in solution. The HCl is added until the pH is highly acidic. At that point the crude cinnamic acid crystals should form. The cinnamic acid is then filtered off and washed several times with water to remove excess hydrochloric acid and any trace of potassium chloride.
After this we have to recrystallize to get rid of all the colored impurities. This can be done under the addition of some activated charcoal or just with water so do as you like. For the recrystallization we add the crude cinnamic acid into a beaker and add destiled water. This is then heated just right under 100 degrees centigrade and more water is added until all of the cinnamic acid has dissolved. So well after the cooling the cinnamic acid was highly contaminated, and that meant. Yay. A second recrystallization. So I set up a second recrystallization to get some usable product. This time I did it in a big crystallization bowl so I can easily fish off the side product with a filter paper. And it work, kinda, but if I will ever use this because I have no idea what I can do with it, I will recrystallize it a third time.
So well then. I got 3 grams of impure product which corresponds to 21.55% yield. That's bad but most certainly a whole lot of product stuck with the sodium carbonate. Have fun and do not kill yourself.